Lukewarmness and procrastination landed this woman in hell. This was the night that I was praying asking the Father how was I doing on my walk cause I always ask the Father how I'm doing on my walk with Him. Is there anything I need to work on, anything I can improve on? As believers in Christ, we need to be doing all the time checking our walk with Christ. So I asked the Father, can you please show me if there is anything I need to work on in the Father's will? That night, I went to bed and I had an out-of-body experience where I felt my spirit being pulled out of my body and I saw myself sleeping. I mean when you were in the spirit you could still feel your hands, you can smell, you can taste, you can see except those senses in the spirit are magnified. You also see other spiritual beings like when I was in the spirit I did see angels and I saw a demon. I knew that I was by the Lord's side because I saw the Lord. He showed me the wounds on his hands but his face was so bright and beautiful. The Lord took me by my hand and I was before his throne. I was literally in heaven. I was observing the Lord judging a soul. She was a blonde Caucasian. She looked like 20 to 21 years old and she had just died. She looked confused. The Lord started to show her a screen with her life, everything she did right, everything she did wrong, from her birth to her death. The screen even showed how she died in a very bad car wreck. I was seeing on the screen, a lot of people told her about Jesus Christ but she kept putting it off, saying, oh, I'll repent tomorrow. I'll repent tomorrow. She did get baptized and she kept going back and forth like a lukewarm Christian. She would serve the Lord and then go back to the world and live how she wants to live and she kept procrastinating and procrastinating. Well, I'll repent for my sins tomorrow. I'll serve God tomorrow. She just kept procrastinating and all of a sudden one day she died in a car wreck. I heard the Lord was saying this, you knew about me. You knew about my gospel. You know about my son Jesus. You know that Jesus Christ is God. I sent servants to warn you and I've called you many many times. Why didn't you answer? The girl stood there with a blank face. She kept saying to the Lord, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But let me tell you something. I'm sorry, was not cutting it. I looked at the girl and my heart was breaking for her as I know what her fate was gonna be. The Lord told her again, why didn't you answer my call? When I knocked on your heart, why didn't you respond? Why didn't you come to me when I called you many times? I sent you servant after servant and yet ye refused to hearken. You chose to live the way that you want to live. Then I remember these words that he told her, you must understand I cannot be in the presence of sin. Sin is an abomination in my eyes and I cannot let sin in heaven. He said to her, sin is unholy and unclean and heaven is holy. God is perfect. I'm perfect. I'm holy. My angels are holy. Heaven is holy. My righteous saints are holy and they cannot be in the presence of sin. Then he proceeded to give her the parable about the old wine and the new wine, how the old wine and new wine cannot mix. The old wine representing sin, the new wine representing righteousness and the same thing with the cloth, old cloth cannot mix with new cloth. Old cloth represents the old man which is sin. New cloth represents righteousness. The cloth reminds me of the cloth Jesus was buried in the tomb. The black cloth can represent judgment if you read the scriptures, the white cloth represents righteousness and holiness. The black cloth is righteous and holy but it represents judgment. The Lord was explaining you cannot mix old wine and new wine and old cloth with the new cloth. Also, a good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit and an evil tree cannot bring forth good fruit. A corrupt tree cannot bring forth good and righteous food. God said to her, you know you had many opportunities but I cannot be in the presence of sin and you are of sin. Then he told her, get thee behind me, Satan. I do not know thee. The door on the left opened and I literally saw Michael the Archangel cast that girl into hell. I saw a soul getting judged. The Lord laid in my spirit and said, No matter how big or small, the sin is a sin is a sin and it's evil in God's eyes and not one soul will get into heaven if they have one spot on them. That includes you. He said, Keep seeking my face. You have some areas that I need to work on. Live for the Lord and keep preparing yourself for his coming. I saw that girl getting judged and tossed in hell and you have no idea how scary that is. It literally increased my fear of God. I saw her get tossed in hell and I woke up with grieving in my spirit. That girl just died of a car accident and she's standing before the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. We don't know when our time's up. 
So if you profess to be a Christian, you can't procrastinate on serving God. You can't procrastinate on repenting of your sins. Do it now. Don't wait to the last second. Always constantly check your walk with the Lord because this girl did not know she was gonna go out and die in a car accident. She didn't know but she kept putting it off about serving God. She kept putting it off. She was called to the ministry to be a watchman and she kept putting it off. Let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen, I am scared of Jesus Christ, and it's a healthy fear but I'm scared of Jesus. Jesus Christ is God. This life that we're living in it goes by in a split second. Ecclesiastes says everything has a season. This life here is gone like in the blinking of an eye. By the time you know it your time will be up and I'm not wishing this on all of you and you'll be standing before the judgment seat of Christ. I mean it is a scary feeling, you understand what I'm saying. I was standing there watching that girl get judged and that could have been me before on the judgment seat of Christ, that could have been you or any one of us. That's a scary feeling. It's very scary. So please if you have not devoted your life to Christ or given your life to Christ please do so now. You can't serve two masters you either serve him or Satan there's no one between this. This experience has altered my life in many ways you cannot imagine. I hope this edifies you and as always test the spirits, seek the counsel of Jesus Christ on what I told you. He's telling all of us to check our walk with him and to make sure that we're doing what he wants us to do that we're living for him so that way when he returns we have no spot on us.